the, the baseline uh, prevalence of tuberculosis infection worldwide is very high. So it's estimated that about a, a third of the world's population is infected with tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, uh, the concept of it can be a little confusing to patients sometimes uh, because there's infection, which often is latent and might be asymptomatic, or it is by definition that, um, which then can either rapidly or over many years uh, uh, go latent and then turn to uh, act disease um, where people feel sick um, and can transmit to others. Uh, so because the burden of baseline infection is so high, um, what uh, many people are at risk to begin with even prior to being infected with HIV. And then once HIV infected, um, HIV infection is considered really the leading cause of progressing from uh, latent infection um, in its dormant stage to active tuberculosis disease. Um, and then once tuberculosis is active, it can be transmitted relatively easily by airborne transmission. So what that means is that in the context of uh, accessing HIV care, going to, for example, receive your antiretroviral therapy and waiting in a clinic, patients can transmit to one another uh, literally by sitting in the same room together. Um, and not only does it expose other patients to risk, but this then exposes the healthcare workforce, which is already in uh, short supply in resource legitimate settings, particularly in Africa, um, to tuberculosis as well. Once, uh, and furthermore, so that's, that's one part of it, is the, the high baseline prevalence, the increased risk of developing active disease once infected due to HIV. Um, and then on top of that, HIV makes tuber active tuberculosis more difficult to diagnose. So many people may show up uh, uh, with um, nonspecific symptoms, such as uh, fevers or sweats at night, or um, uh, perhaps a cough um, or some weight loss, and it can be very difficult to discern what the cause of this, because it's the, the cause of this syndrome is, or the symptoms, um, because many things can cause them, particularly with advanced immune suppression. On top of that, the classic diagnostic tests that have been used historically since tuberculosis was um, really, the, the bacteria was discovered by Robert, Robert Koch in the, you know, the late 19th century is smear. So looking under the microscope and seeing acid fast bacilli or the TB bacteria microscopically. Um, the challenge is that due to immune suppression from HIV, um, patients can have active disease and not have the bacteria visible. And in fact, the sensitivity of smear looking under the microscope for the bacteria really drops off uh, pretty dramatically um, with more advanced immune suppression and symptoms become even more atypical. So um, along with a higher risk of get developing after disease, you have on top of that a real challenge of diagnosing people, which uh, leads to, leads to um, people going without diagnosis and dying of their, of their tuberculosis. Uh, so it's a very, it's a huge challenge. Um, we have great therapy for it, but if people are not realizing they're infected, not being diagnosed, um, and then once diagnosed even, uh, not everyone's getting uh, treated, um, we have some major uh, obstacles that we have to get through before we can really address this epidemic fully. And we're making great strides, but there's a lot of work to be done.